In this video, we will create a flowing organic vessel using Fusion 360. This is what you see on the screen now. And we're going to go ahead and, and create all of the, uh, the geometry and slice it and then print it. We will be using the 3D PotterBot 2.9 version with Laguna WC606 clay. So let's get started. First we hit the Create button and under Create we can hit the uh, box and then you're gonna pick a plane doesn't really matter too much and we're gonna dimension it out. You can enter the dimensions in the box or stretch them out. So we're putting in 100 millimeters uh, square okay and we're going to pull it out or enter 100 millimeters to try to get it uh, square this uh, to the length and then the width we're going to go up to 175 I think okay what's really important is the faces so uh, we've got seven faces we'll change that to nine and the faces on the height are two that's fine because the faces will give you the resolution for being able to change uh, the individual um, uh, areas of the vessel. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, close off this box and open the edit form. This is a very powerful tool. It's, it's, a, it's a set of tools that uh, uh, gives you a lot of ability. Use the default settings initially. So we're going to click on a line and we're going to double click which gives us 360 all the ways around and grab the handle, the rotation handle and we're going to rotate it about minus 45 degrees we're going to skip one, go up and highlight the entire circle again and we're going to go in the opposite direction grabbing the handle, the rotational handle okay skip one and and uh, in the opposite opposite direction. All right, we'll have a look at the basic form. Now we're going to to scale scale it. The scaling handle is a little difficult. It's in the center. It's a circle with three triangles. You have to hit it, and it turns blue. there it is and just pull out or in and you can scale um, if you've selected um, 360 degrees uh, around the object you can scale the entire object so we're going to pull it in a little bit as we come up and we're going to pull it out a bit on the top Okay, we're going to take a look. Okay, again, grabbing the center scaling handles. And pull it in just a bit. And that's kind of what we're going to end up with. Now we're going to have to address the roundness on the bottom and the top. Uh, the bottom is easily uh, fixable in the slicing software, but um, the top we'll have to deal with in a minute. And I'm just going to demonstrate here what you can do with a single vorticity. So you can actually grab a single unit and you can use all of the, the tools. So grab a tool you can pull it, stretch it, size it, rotate it. So we're just going to stretch it out a bit. But we're going to put it back in. That was just to show you. Now we're going to work on trimming the top flat.
So let's uh, exit out of here. Finish, finish form. Okay, and we're going to open up a sketch. So go to the sketch environment and pick a plane. And then we're going to pick a two-point rectangle. And essentially draw the rectangle on what you'd like to disappear. Either stretch it or enter in the numbers. That looks about right. So we're going to stop sketch. Uh, right click, press pull, and um, we have to go in two directions. So click here on uh, two sides. And grab the handle. And whatever turns red, you're going to trim. Go to the other side. It's really quite simple. Hit OK. That's it. Looks good. The bottom is easily handled in the slicing software. So now we're going to go to File, 3D Print. I'll select the body. Sometimes you have to convert it, but uh, usually you don't. If you convert it, it's under Modify tab. And it takes a little while for it to crunch the numbers. There's the triangles. Looks interesting. Hit OK. And this is a, the, the great part of, uh, of Fusion 360. You can enter in your software package, uh, Cura, Reptir, or Simplify, which I'm using, and it imports it uh, directly. So I came in sideways, so I have to uh, 275 degrees, slip it up, hit the center button. Okay, now we'll address the bottom issue. So we don't want to print this shape. It's too difficult. So we just submerge it down through the deck, and that's it. And of course you can scale it at this point. Let's go through some of the settings. So this is my 3.5 nozzle. And the layer height is um, a 1.2. And we'll put three layers on the bottom. And we're in the vase mode. Okay, we'll go to additions. I typically print uh, two or three skirts as a priming skirt to get the clay flowing at the um, correct uh, cl correct rate. Okay, these don't matter too much. G code, the scripts. There's an ending uh, script which pulls the nozzle away from the vessel. That's kind of important. Otherwise, it uh, can mess it mess it up towards the end. Okay, and then the speeds two hundred is way too fast, so put in your speed, traveling speed. Update. Okay, and prepare to print. Looks good and just burn it to the SD card and then put it into the uh, the uh, 3D Potter Bot. That's it. Okay, let's print. Uh, we're in action here. And again, this is the uh, 2.9 uh, uh, Potter Bot with the uh, DC servos. The, let's talk a little bit about the clay. The clay is a uh, uh, WC606 stoneware by Laguna. Uh, we're having quite a, quite good success with it. Uh, it, uh, it's, it it stands up well to large vessels. The adhesion is good. Um, so we're uh, we're using this uh, 
as uh, something we're experimenting with right now. Another point to raise up is that the, the, the real advantage with uh, or 3D Potter bots, this clay came out of the bag. It wasn't even pugged. So we slightly moistened the clay uh, with a rag in a bag uh, and uh, cut it out of the, the bag and put it right into the tube. Uh, there's no air bubbles. Um, it, it's even better than, than when it comes out of the pug mill, unless you have a, a really good pug mill. Um, but uh, you can see it's smooth. Uh, this is real time. It's not speeded up. And by using direct nozzle extrusion, there's no difference between when you start the print and when you finish the print. You can see the consistency of each layer is exact. And this can only happen with a direct nozzle extrusion. You can't do this with air compressors and hoses and uh, thinning the clay out to where it's it's like a heavy slip. Uh, it's just not possible. And also with using uh, uh, clay right out of the bag, you're able to produce very large vessels. So you can go up uh, 22, 23 inches we've been able to achieve and, and maybe more depending on the, the nozzle size. We also have recently added to our nozzle uh, diameter sizes anywhere from one millimeter on up to 12, me 12 millimeters on the nozzle so um, it really gives you the opportunity to stretch the envelope. The uh, 3D Potter Bot is capable of, of using the one millimeter nozzle or two. Two is probably the best for small items. Uh, the resolution is 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 exceptional and and repeatable. So here's the finished product, and I'm gonna give you a close up, so you can see the uh, the layer quality. And again, this is clay out of the bag into the tube, and uh, this is this is how you get exceptional results, and the consistency is just perfect. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to visit our website and uh, subscribe to the video and let me know if you, if you, if you like these uh, Fusion 360 uh, tutorials. I'll, I'll do a couple of more. Thanks for watching.